Today I am going to build my wife a bath caddy. Hey guys, how's it going? So, apparently the traditional gift for your fifth wedding anniversary is something wood. I don't know. Danielle likes taking baths and I had some cherry I picked up a while ago for no real reason. So I figured I could throw together a bath caddy pretty easily. I mean, assemble with love and care. After picking out my board, I noticed that it had a little bit of a warp to it. Luckily the edge was already flat so I didn't have to break out the Stanley number no. 6 plane, but I did need to flatten the piece. I marked out the center of the board as the piece I wanted because I wanted to use that live edge section. Not that it mattered, but more on that later. And cut it out on the miter saw. With the piece cut to length, I lay it on my table saw to figure out exactly how bad the piece is twisted. Not terrible, not great. So I break out the planer sled I whipped up when a friend of mine needed something flattened and glued the cherry onto it using some shims, painter's tape, and CA glue to keep it all from moving, which worked fairly well actually. Right up until I decided to throw it through the planer for one last pass, and then it would be good. Well, crap. It pulled itself off the sled and took a nice gouge out of the back end. Had this been a rough length, I might have been able just to cut the affected end off and that would have been fine, but no, this was the final length. All right, so I got it remounted, hopefully a little bit more secure. I'm just gonna try to keep planing it down. I lifted this side up a little bit higher to try and get this divot out and then shouldn't take as much to get down to here, so hopefully we're good. With the top face finally flattened, I can flip over the piece and flatten out the backside, which no more gouges were taken out of luckily since this is about the thinnest I would want to go on this. Especially since at this thickness, the live edge portion I wanted to keep was already planed away. Anyways, I can set this piece aside for now. Over at the table saw, I cut off two two inch wide strips off of the off cut. These will be the, whatever you want to call them, blocks that keep the caddy in the tub tub holders, feet, let's go with feet. Over at the miter saw, I cut a half inch or so off the length of the feet and then flush up the other ends just to make them slightly narrower than the caddy itself. At this point, that's it for separate components, so I move on to sanding, where I work through the grits up to about 120 or so for now. With the sanding done for now, I move on to chamfering the edges. Yes, I do have a router table, but no, I'm not using it on this project. Basically, I just wanted to set the chamfer depth once, but was more comfortable chamfering the small pieces with the router clamped in my vise, so that's what I did for the small pieces. For the big piece, I pulled the router out of the vise and chamfered the edges with the router in handheld mode, which apparently I thought you would be more interested in looking at my wrist and the top of the router than what I was actually doing. Could have just used the router table. With the chamfering done, I hit the freshly cut edges with a sanding block just to smooth it up a little bit. Then I can mark out center and figure out where the outer edges of the feet can go based on the width of the tub. I tried using the wood glue and CA glue trick where the CA glue acts as the temporary clamp and the wood glue provides the long term holding power, but the two pieces didn't quite made up like I wanted them to, so I ended up clamping it up and setting it off to the side for an hour or so anyways. After an hour, I pulled off the clamps and sanded everything up to 220 grit. Then to add in the wine glass holder, I pretty much just picked a front to back centered spot on the right hand side of the caddy, punched it with a center punch and drilled it out with a Forstner bit. My Forstner bits aren't the sharpest and while I was attempting to just push the point through the underside so I can finish off the hole from there, that didn't work out and I have a nasty little bit of chip out on the bottom side 
Luckily, it's on the bottom side, so it'll never be seen, but it's still kind of annoying. With the wine glass hole drilled out, I mark out the cut lines for the slot for the glass to, you know, actually get to the hole. To prevent chip out, I cut the lines with my marking knife and cut out the slot with a jigsaw and speed square. And then hit this with the router and chamfer bit as well. Unfortunately, I did just eyeball this and it is a bit too narrow of a slot. I didn't notice this until after I was done, so I still have to go back and widen it, but I haven't gotten, it, gotten to it yet. After a little bit more sanding around the wine glass hole, it is time for finishing. I set up a couple blocks with screws sticking out of them to act as finishing feet. With these screws holding up the piece, I can flip the caddy and the finish side can sit on the screws without messing up the coat. I apply a couple coats of gloss polyurethane, sanding with 320 grit in between coats and finish it off with a final coat of satin polyurethane with a 3000 grit sanding pad. The satin polyurethane takes down the shine a little bit without muddying the wood grain, which worked out quite well. And with that, this project is done. Other than the couple issues I had with it while building it, I'm pretty happy with it. It was a fairly quick build. I probably only spent two hours or so of actually working on it over the course of a couple days. And at the end of the day, Danielle's really happy with it, which is really all that matters. I still have to fix that wine glass slot, but I will do that off camera at a later date. Closer to winter, since it'll most likely be used a lot more then, because it's, you know, cold. And with that, I'm going to call it a video. Thank you all for watching, and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can always follow me on Instagram at John Schreiner. Otherwise, I will see you here in the next video, and have a good one.